and good evening, everyone. It is the 1st of July, 2021, and uh, many, many exciting things happening as seems every single week gets more and more exciting. So um, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, delay much, but what I will do is uh, while people are joining us, uh, wow, we got a crowd, this is fantastic. Um, let me just do the honors here, talk about a little bit. Um, So water's new gold, and uh, this is really a new asset class, and uh, that's becoming more and more serious. This is, of course, briefing number 117. And I want to remind everyone, es posible escuchar en español. So all you got to do is click on the globe at the bottom of your dialogue, Zoom dialogue, and you'll be able to listen in Spanish right now. So that's really cool. Um and as usual, we have our safe harbor statement, which says that we are always um, very careful to tell you exactly how we think it's going to be. And um, well, I guarantee you that we will tell you always as accurately as we can. Okay, so tonight um, there is a, a crypto event in Palmas, uh, Puerto Rico, which is a gated community. Um, and uh, you can see in the far left, uh, first, first Palmas crypto event in Puerto Rico and three speakers and um, Ivan Anz, who is our partner with Philanthro Investors. He's the guy in white there. And um, we sent Ken Berenger down from Pittsburgh to be there. And um, I have a little testimonial here from him that uh, here he is. Riggs, you know, I don't have a sweet tooth. I'm not a dessert guy, but Bella makes a hell of a, uh, of a dessert. And you should try this. You should come down to, you should come down to San Juan just for this, right? Just do a round trip, have some and go. Can... <laughs> this is wacky. Bunch of wackos. So um, now I'm, I'm going to switch over to the video mode. Bruce Ferguson is asking, uh, is the video off? Did you guys, good now, okay. Um, and I hope that that um, video of Ken came through, otherwise I can replay it. But in any case, it's not a big deal. It's more bragging about, about Bella's cake, which a pie, which is apparently amazing. Um, all right, so let me flip over into um, video mode. There's gonna be some very Wait, good- You know what? I'm not gonna have that again. All right, here we go. This was shot last Sunday. It's a small excerpt. Our mission is to bring water into the digital world, and we've been working on this for a long time. 2018 was an amazing year because it's really when cryptocurrency started to break out and we saw that there could be a potential business application of what had been really kind of a marginal, nerdy, geeky, crypto kitties kind of world, and it was becoming real. And uh, all my friends from the dot-com era were now in crypto. And so I saw a chance to essentially encode water into a currency that could then be used. That was the vision. And I remember literally in December 2017 being at, at the Start Engine conference and being so excited about what was, what was happening. So we launched this uh, process and, and a coin development firm helped us put the first concepts together. I started going to different conferences. There was a, a decentralized conference in Silicon Valley, D10E, that was very important. And I was able to express this concept of decentralized funding of water. And it was at a decentralized conference, which is kind of cool. It culminated in this week called Restart Week at, at Puerto Rico, where literally three different conferences happened in one week. It was hectic, it was crazy, it was so much fun. And I got to you know, speak at Coin Agenda, which was very good. We were making a lot of alliances and, and you could feel the buzz, you know, it was exciting as could be. What was happening though in the background was that one of crypto's pullbacks was happening and what we now know as crypto winter of 2018. And eventually we had, you know what? Um, the market's against us, we're just gonna have to chill. And we had fundamental issues with how to monetize the water for the cryptocurrency, which is really the key issue. After 2018, we really had to kind of just put the whole crypto concept on the shelf and focus on the basics of our own technology rollout. And this is when we really focused on what's called modular water systems, which is these water systems in a box. They're, 
they're patented and we've licensed them for a long time. And in fact, in, in retrospect, now it's taken off. In June, we, we had the last week of June just went nuts with about $800,000 worth of business. So finally it's rolling and in retrospect, three years wasn't so long, but it was not a, an easy time because we had to fund it all throughout. Now, we arrive at 2020. Right around my birthday in February 2020, we realized that everything was changing economically with the world and that we had to move quickly to deal with something that basically said, look, you're gonna have to make it all come together or else may not survive, right? 2020 was the year where you either just, you know, you either sank or you made it. And we worked very, very hard with uh, Tom Marchesello with the tech side, with Ken Berenger on the financial side. And we finally spotted the real reason why the water industry doesn't go anywhere really, doesn't grow fast. And it has to do with the money supply. If you feed money in the front end, then things happen on the back end, right? You're, you, you go from being a salesman to being a white knight because, hey, here, don't worry about the funding, it's taken care of, just sign here. And that became, in the end, what we called water on demand. Now, it's all very well to talk about water on demand and talk about outsourcing, but if you're gonna give somebody a machine without their having to pay for it, you better have finance. And so that grew into the effort that's ongoing right now with the tremendous help from Ivan Ants and Artie Marin of filling through investors and their international network. And we started realizing that we could do more than just pay our monthly bills. We could actually raise millions of dollars from accredited investors, people who are business people, normal people, but you know, they've done pretty well. And 100,000 at a time, maybe a million dollars at a time, build these funds that would fund all of this. And then that brought us to this opportunity to bring back the crypto. We feel that it's imperative that we create a water coin for the world. And this is the vision that's jumped out. And it's been enabled by the fact that it's really, really easy now to develop and launch a coin. What we're generally seeing is the rapid launch of coins that have the potential for benefiting a community. And so a community would, in a way, vote on uh, how we're gonna use the funds that are developed through this process for good, right? So here, this um, we have this trademarked Dollar H2O brand, and let's imagine that this is a coin community, and this community would be very interested in what, what can we do to help water. Brown water in Compton, lead-filled water in Flint, uh, toxic water in South Bend, bad water in wells in Africa, all of that. How, how can we affect that? And that would be the general benefit, and it would not be for Origin Clear specifically, it would be really, the world would, would sort of take it over. Exciting times, and uh, I tell you, it's, it's really become our mission to bring water into the digital world through this strategy. That's our vision, it's really exciting. Um, it's, it's becoming more and more what we're about because we see this as having tremendous leverage to transform the water industry from a financial vehicle, one that is a 21st century financial vehicle, i.e. digital currency. We're very excited, we'd love to have you join us. Check us out at originclear.com. So that was shot, um, as I say, Sunday, as uh, things are developing rapidly and it's going beyond that. I'm going to, um, uh, don't want to keep repeating. Thank you very much. And now I'm going to share excerpts from yesterday's Trusted Investor Conference. Now, what are these things? The Trusted Investor Conference is any investor who's invested more than once in our private placement um, at any time is part of that group. And um, so it's, it's, it's a great group to give us feedback because these are people who really put their money where their mouth is and they are truly important to us. So because this is mostly text, I'm gonna take, take it off video mode. And um, all right, this is the Trusted Investor Conference and it's the second installment of it. Uh, and hopefully it will become an institution as things get more and more exciting. Why am I talking so much about a water coin? 
there's a number of reasons. The first one is that I can't tell you how often I get regular people going, how can I help with the state of water in the world? And we go, well, you can invest a hundred thousand dollars. I'm like, yeah, okay. That doesn't help people. And, and yeah, we, we, we have these regulation a offerings and that's fine too, but I'm talking about something much, much, much broader. A really, you know, like literally where ultimately millions of people could get involved. And that is a whole different uh, scale than what we've had up till now. And the reason why it would scale up so big was, would be it does not directly fund Origin Clear's operations, it funds good things. So here's the problem, it's complex, really complex. And it's also a security, which means that we have to do it with accredited investors. Whenever I talk about trying to do an unaccredited investor offering with a coin, people tell me, no, the SEC will just, no, they won't let it happen. It's still too early. So we need a water coin for the world, quote unquote, that is not a security, where we're a sponsor and we're being beneficial. Uh, now, and we're not even the ones that, um, uh, coming up with these ideas. It comes from the community. They're not our ordinary industrial business, but they're doing great things, for example, for Puerto Rico, for Flint, for Long Beach, Long Island, for Fort Lauderdale, for, you know, um, Compton, all these, these places that are in need, that it's not really a commercial project. And until now, we, we, we haven't been able to say, hey, we're going to help, right? So what our strategy is, is to go ahead and build this and launch this water coin for the world, empower people to take water quality in their own hands, build these water demand payment streams, which would be in crypto, but we have time to do it. So let me take a look with you at the roadmap as to how we're looking at it and what kind of timelines we're talking about. So here is a high level roadmap. And as you can see, phase zero and phase one happen within two weeks. Now, when you're talking about real work, look at the NFT, the, the, the non-fungible token. Fungible means switchable. Non-switchable token, meaning like the unique token that, that carries these payments. It's two years out, which is too long, I think, but it, it means that we can take time with it. We can do ordinary water on demand without worrying about a coin. And meanwhile, we've got a great popular coin out there that does, you can see here, the governance mechanism enables the community to vote on proposals brought forth by the board in light of the allocations token of tokens. Okay, what does that mean? It means that this is really for the people. And that is the dream, I think, of decentralized currency. So that's where that is going. And it's very attractive. And I think we'll be doing a lot of good with that. So conclusion is that cryptocurrency is moving into mainstream business and now water, both with these broad initiatives and with the more specialized ones. In summary, we are monetizing water treatment by offering these managed paper gallon contracts. And I'll be, I'll be reporting further on that. That's uh, water on demand number one is the first subsidiary. We're building others. We have our modular water systems tech, which now has broken through you know, on revenue. They literally just took off crazy uh, in the last few days. And then finally, scaling it up to a global level using cryptocurrency, but starting with a simple coin, followed much later by packaging payment streams as these unique marketplace securities. The idea is water on demand was an idea to create a solution to the water problem. Crypto won't complicate it. Crypto is complicated, but it's not going to complicate water on demand. Eventually, it's designed to simplify it. It's simply going to be a second. In other words, water on demand I'm not smart enough to have you know, thought of this with rigs with crypto in mind, right? We, we said, okay, everything's shutting down. What do we do, right? This was designed with dollars, okay? And it's going to function the same way any sort of automatic transaction, transactional payment happens, you know, through your, you know, your, your Amazon account, your cell phone. We don't pay our cell phone bills. They just take it out of our checking account ACH. So this will be designed to run with the same automatic payment structure using the dollar. But if you believe the dollar might face some challenges, and you believe that perhaps taking a very complicated and, and a lot, you see, uh, the idea is this, with the first hundred units, you could manage this just fine. Yeah. But the yeah. idea is you want a million units. Well, that, that, then it's gonna get really complex really quick. Cryptocurrency is designed to um, dummy proof payment systems, right? To eliminate human error. So by the time the NFT is developed, to simplify these, these payment streams for all the investors, which is a year and a half out, I think it is a little bit more than a year and a half out. What we, we hope to have several of these water on demand 
funds, if you will, already in place with a couple hundred of these things, truly believe it'll be a preferred method because it'll be so much more simplified. What on demand number one is the subsidiary we were building. And in fact, we're about to launch one on demand number two and number three for different channels. There are lots of investors in the crypto world who are extremely liquid. And so Ken is pursuing a whole channel of uh, cryptocurrency investors, as is philanthropic investors, in fact, that they would be interested if there was a crypto angle. And these people have done extremely well. This is so much aligned with the philanthropic investors vision because now we really have the tool to go limitless worldwide. And with the movement that is taking the world by the, by the storm, not, not, uh, not because of anything, you know, Walmart just bought more than a billion dollars in, in cryptocurrency or, you know, two governments in, in Latin America made cryptocurrency legal and that's one, one um, currency that can be exchanged. One is in Salvador and another one is Paraguay. They just adopted and make, you know, cryptocurrency legal to be used as any, as a <laughs> no. normal government currency. <laughs> yes. So th this is, uh, I support your vision and I think uh, it will be great. With that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you very much all for having been with us. We spent a very good hour. And um, don't hesitate to email Ken or myself. And we think you guys are the best. Uh, we I couldn't be happier with the team. Uh, Keith Rutten says, the potential is astronomical. And I agree 100% with that. So thank you all. Uh, have a great uh, rest of your summer. And uh, don't be strangers. We're, we're around to talk to. Come on, folks. Peace. Peace. Well, obviously, that was a small part of the um, of the trust, trust investor conference. We went through a lot of of details about what's happening with the company and so forth, and. Um, you know, nothing that was what you might call material, non-public information. We don't do that. So anything we discussed is known, but we were able to answer questions and so forth. And um, I have um, a comment from Rob Powell's, um, Powelson, Rob Powelson. The water industry is hugely fragmented. We have 51,000 drinking water systems in the U.S., over 14,000 wastewater systems. So currency solution aside for a moment, how can you compete with investor-owned water utilities and the contract operators like Suez, Veolia, Jacobs Engineering? And that is an extremely good question. Um, and our star um, guests will, will join us shortly to discuss some of that. But here's the simple point. We are finding that the, uh, the, big, the big water companies are having a problem dealing with the new breed of customer, which is a private business trying to treat water. This is a new phenomenon. It's called decentralized water. And because of the breakdown of these, um, you know, tens of hundreds of thousands of, of water, um, centralized water infrastructure points, um, there's a lot of uh, migration to the edge where a brewery has to do its own water treatment, an animal farm, et cetera. And these are too small for the big companies, especially when you start talking about uh, DBOO, the design, build, own, operate. Those are typically only done for very large systems. We'll cover that very shortly, Rob. It's a really, really good question. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play a quick excerpt from a webinar that was given uh, today, rather yesterday, I'm sorry, yesterday by Dan to some engineers. And it'll give you a flavor of what he presents to the industry and why these things are so popular. And then we'll get a chance to actually talk to Dan and his Project manager, Rob Litos. One second here. Let me tee this one up. Um, and I'm going to optimize for video clip. There we go. Again, my name is Dan Early. I'm chief engineer with Progressive Water Treatment and we are innovation leaders of water infrastructure. Reason number one is that uh, my counterparts in McKinney, Texas with Progressive Water Treatment. Second reason that we are unique is our focus on heavy plastic manufacturing and leveraging heavy plastic uh, materials and heavy plastic manufacturing for infrastructure solutions and product development. So we put those two together. 
uh, those two things do make us very, very unique to the water industry here in North America. As far as modular water systems, um, I had that program up on a daily basis. Uh, the modular water systems program uh, is a continuation of a vision that started about 10 or 12 years ago with me. And this is a focus on the uh, infrastructure solutions and infra infrastructure packages for wastewater applications. 15 and 20 years ago, we were working with a lot of utility customers and clients and end users that were building new water systems or replacing old water collection or water distribution systems or wastewater collection and conveyance systems and treatment plants. And I started seeing a lot of problems with durability and sustainability, concrete, epoxy coated steel, and those types of things were being used as the materials of choice. Um, I had in new installations that were two and three years old. This is looking back in 2005, 2006. Uh, these installations would be two or three years old at that time. And I was already seeing the detrimental effects due related to corrosion, especially on wastewater lift stations and packaged uh, epoxy coated steel packaged uh, wastewater treatment plants. Uh, I had a number of customers that were asking me and challenging me to try to develop new ways of, of delivering durable and sustainable equipment technologies. So in 2008, I actually embarked upon a custom engineered project where we were going to custom design a very large um, all plastic structural plastic wastewater lift station for a customer. Um, customer wanted it, customer loved it. Uh, the design process was pretty straightforward. But the fact of the matter was is that the industry at that point in time was just not quite there. The, the manufacturing industry wasn't up quite to speed. To me, that represented an opportunity. So in 2010, uh, with a former business partner, we formed a product development company. And that company's sole purpose was to start developing infrastructure solutions based around heavy plastic manufacturing that would then start integrating some of these manufacturing technologies. Wastewater, if you're in an urbanized environment, wastewater collection, conveyance and treatment is, you've got to have it. It is fundamental, it is mission critical. Uh, it is absolutely required to protect the environment and to protect human health and safety. What we know from experience over the last century is, is that concrete and brick and masonry and steel and those materials don't lend themselves very well to sustainable utility infrastructure systems. Um, all of these issues that you see about sustainability, expensive maintenance, environmental problems due to leaking sewer systems and failing infrastructure, all of those things contribute to the ongoing struggle of maintaining a utility system. Materials, uh, concrete and steel are, are so susceptible to corrosion. It is not uncommon to see pump stations and steel package plants to have a maximum sustained life cycle of 20 or 25 years, and then they need a full on replacement. So what do we, uh, what solution are we promoting and why do we do that? Well, we think that the, the Avermod lift station is a, a very effective solution to these issues related to corrosion and durability and sustainability. Uh, our use of polypropylenes and polyethylene materials uh, where we are taking extrusion and winding technologies from certain sectors and taking structural panel materials from other sectors and bringing them together into a unique manufacturing environment. Those things are now are allowing us to build and to promote the Avermod lift station. And it allows us also to become what we refer to as a total equipment solution. Uh, because we, our foundational element begins with the heavy plastics and the heavy plastic manufacturing model, because we do that, and because we engineer around that and we develop the, the, the solution, the pump station and the treatment plant around the heavy plastic structure, when we start integrating the OEM supply chains of pumps and blowers and controls and all the other ancillary equipment and products that go into a pump station or a treatment plant, that is really what makes our model work, our business model work and our infrastructure solutions, um, uh, next generation technology. And it really makes those things very, very effective. Um, obviously, you can tell it's kind of geeky, but you got a flavor of what. Again, my name's Dave. Of what modular water systems does, and uh, at this time, I'm going to bring um, Dan Early and Rob Leos on the show. Uh, there we are. How are you, gentlemen? Good. How are you, Rich? Good. I just realized that my microphone is over by the speaker playing pickup. So let me just uh, fix that. There we go. So um, first of all, I'm, I was blown away. Tom and I were blown away by the sudden 
the, the, the dam, the dam broke a couple of weeks ago, things started happening and we couldn't be more delighted that that webinar really gives a flavor of, of why we're special here. Now, um, the question that Rob Powelson had earlier. Um, so the real question is, um, you know, what do you say to competition from Suez, Veolia, Jacobs Engineering, Evoqua and so forth? Um, are, are, are you complementary? Are you replacing them? What's the competitive landscape? <clears throat> we, um, my first response is that they are too big. Uh, the, the, those companies, those are, those are mega water companies and they work with mega urban utilities. And um, those are heavily regionalized, heavily centralized. And that, that is not, uh, we, we work in a completely different segment and a completely different market. So uh, it's, it's different, uh, just different worlds altogether. Um, in the decentralized world with the smaller utilities and the point of use need that we work with on a daily basis, whether it's water or wastewater, uh, that is where the future is. Uh, I, I am very familiar with uh, the 51,000 drinking water systems and 14,000 wastewater systems. A lot of those are very, 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 very small systems and Suez and Veolia and Jacobs and companies of that like, they typically do not even dabble in that market. Um, uh, occasionally, maybe they do, but that we are we're positioned to serve these smaller comp uh, these small these smaller utilities these smaller decentralized uh, point of use needs. Um, so that that's that would be the answer that I would uh, provide for that question. Yeah, I, I think that we're in, in a great position, and and also I'm hearing that because many many uh, these water companies are getting, you know, the, the personnel getting old. They're saying, hey, we, we're running out of people. People are retiring. And um, we need help from perhaps a more um, agile player. And that's, I think, a lot of business we're seeing too, right? We are, yeah. We're, we're, we can turn on a dime. We are much, much more nimble, and much more, uh, we're just much more flexible and much more responsive to needs of these smaller customers. The other comment too is that these, these decentralized utility or these, uh, these other utilities, these public utilities, they are old and they are, they are committed to the, to the utility system that they have and they have to maintain it and that is an albatross that they have to bear i mean it is it is a massive burden uh, that the, these utility owners are faced with and the prospects are not good they are not right we saw that the the uh, big uh, biden infrastructure bill the water um, um, budget got cut from 111 billion to 55 billion um, and that's out of a two trillion dollar uh, package well now one trillion i guess but the point is that um, nobody's spending enough on water infrastructure, which is leading to the need for these self-contained uh, water systems at the edge. Um, and so my, my question to you guys before we discuss some of the deals you've been doing is, um, how, how do you, um, you two operate and, together? And then how do you work with, with your um, people at Progressive Water? Okay. Um well, Rob, Rob and I form a team, um, and we work. I mean, we work hand in hand, day in and day out. Uh, we are in this day and age. Uh, we're video conferencing, and we're, even though we don't share a common office, uh, we work together in Zoom and video chat, and we tag team and go after our projects. Um, and we use a collaborative working environment. Um, I usually, I'm usually at the tip of the spear. Um, I'm usually out working, uh, meeting with engineers, meeting with end users, customers that have a need. Um, I quickly evaluate and understand what their challenges are, what their what their solution may be, and then um, I'll bring it back into the office, uh, work with Rob, and he and I will then work through solution development. Uh, Rob is absolutely mission critical to what I do. Um, I cannot function without Rob uh, being a part of this program. Uh, he, he is he is a, a very strong compliment to me, and, and he makes my job much much easier. Uh, so he handles the job, Rob, and I'll let him, he can chime in and, and fill in some gaps here, but he, um, where I'll, I'll handle big picture solution development and I'll make recommendations on what I think would be the best uh, solution for a prospective customer. Rob will then come in and he fills in the gaps. He makes sure that he, he will, will scope it out, uh, get all the pricing together, and we'll make sure that we have a solution that is truly uh, in tune with what the customer is looking for. Um, and that is the, and the proof, the proof of that is this past week, um, this past, uh, well, the past two weeks in particular, last week, we, we found out that we had landed, um, over $800,000 worth of new orders. 
But the wonderful thing about it is, is just this week, Rob and I are working on new prospects where we continue to build our pipeline and the modular water systems pipeline of future prospective sales, it grew probably by another half a million to three quarters of a million dollars just this week. Wow. It's very, and it's just a function of the way we do things. Now, um, my, my grandmother used to say when people would talk about her and her presence, she'd say, you know, I'm not the cat, <laughs> right? So Rob, you're not the cat. So um, we'd love to hear from you a little bit. And, um, and you must also be the connection between the, the, the brilliant Dan Early and the, the boots on the ground in, in McKinney, Texas. I am. I, I'm, I'm kind of go between. Like Dan said, he's, he's the tip of the spear. Um, and, and as he's, he's bringing these projects in, I kind of manage them, uh, price them out. Um, and then when an opportunity actually goes to contract, then I start working with uh, uh, our, what you said, our boots on the ground in McKinney uh, to make sure that the, the project gets run. Uh, like we like to say, we like to flawlessly execute the projects. Yeah. Well, now, Rob, also, um, you're not just using the 20-odd uh, the people in McKinney, but also you're working with outsourced uh, plastic fabricators, am I right? We do. We do. We have some subcontract uh, work that, that, uh, that gets done that, that I will manage normally. Keep now, let's say that Progressive Water became, uh, so far they've kept up with the demand, but let's say they got overwhelmed. Uh, would you be able to take your, your, your designs and just work with other water companies that, that are competent enough to deal with it? Sure, we could. See, you know, in our business, the, the opportunity life cycle, you know, it can sometimes be a long time, sometimes years. Uh, so volume's important. So I think it's a testament uh, about staying really committed to the business plan and driving the standardization uh, while we're constantly improving our, our software and algorithms to get more through opportunities through the door. But by standardizing, we, we've kind of made it so anyone can do it. I'd like to add something to what Rob just said right there. Just a case in point today, uh, we got a project or a new prospect that uh, came into the pipeline about two weeks ago. And because of where we have standardized, uh, like our Veriskid product line, uh, we have had uh, we had an, uh, a, a consultant that, that, that informed me that they're going to make a regular referral for a $250,000 package just this afternoon. It wow. didn't exist three weeks ago. And it was because we're so standardized. It's like promoting and selling a car. Well, you're standardized and also you are the adopted uh, design. You're specified in the design because you have a proprietary package. And um, Rob, you've worked obviously in other water companies. Um, how is it different doing the modular water uh, game? I think the biggest uh, difference is, is just the, the modular water concept. I, I like calling them modules. So when we're, when we're uh, looking at, at an opportunity for say a wastewater treatment system, we can plug in the modules wherever we need to very quickly in order to give a customized solution that we don't have to customize because we've already right. done the work up front. Yep. Yeah. That's Bingo. Awesome. That is a beautiful thing. Um, and while we're on the topic, Rob Howison asks, so in the Texas of the case of the Texas power outages, how are you engineering the power systems behind the unit to stay online? That's a small question, but it's worth answering. Yeah, no, I, you know, uh, go take it, take it, Dan. I, I guess uh, Rob, what he's asking about here is he's talking, I guess, like emergency power, backup power to the utility systems we work with. Yeah. We routinely um, supply, specify and supply um, emergency power uh, generators to back up our water, water plants and our wastewater treatment plants. We sell them with our wastewater lift station. So when you run into a situation like that where you have a point of use uh, utility system, a water or wastewater system, emergency power has to be a prime consideration. And we supply that tech, we supply that as a, an ancillary product. That's a beautiful thing. Well, um, I wanted to um, quickly discuss now the update as, as module, I mean, what we're looking at right here is a great PO, uh, you know, 560,000 roughly which is great, but it is a design and build. In other words, you design it, you build it, you commission it, and it's gone, it's done. Now we're moving into design, build, and operate, and ultimately we'll just move into design, build, own, and operate as we get these, these uh, 
the, the capital, build up the capital from water on demand. So um, I guess what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll uh, get into reviewing a little bit the uh, what's going on with the DBOO opportunities. And um, so uh, take it away, Dan, you've got, you've got uh, six opportunities right here to talk about. Yeah, um, be glad to, Rig. So the first one, uh, Mobile Home Park customer in Pennsylvania. Um, as we mentioned last week, we are now in the final permitting and approval stage with that customer. Um, so everything it is moving through, uh, once Pennsylvania DEP issues their approval, uh, the customer moves forward with the project. We anticipate that's probably gonna take another, probably take another 45 days before we'll see that final approval. It is anticipated, we were hoping we'd have the meeting this week, but because of the, I guess, press it running into the 4th of July weekend, we weren't able to set up a meeting with the consultant and the end user, but we expect that possibly next week we'll have that meeting. And we look to have a contract in hand uh, moving forward with that customer in the next, uh, from the next several weeks. As far as the craft brewing customer, I did finally, we did finally hear back from our design build partner in Maryland. Uh, no status change on that one. They're still moving forward. They're collecting uh, data. They're still collecting wastewater data to get a sense of the historical usage. Project's still viable, still moving forward. Um, we'll know more that, about that probably in the next month or so. RV Park customers, same story there. They're uh, working on their vesting and entitlements uh, through the rezoning process. As soon as they get rezoned, then the, that then everything ramp, uh, accelerates and ramps up on the hour end relative to engineering and delivery of the, the equipment. Uh, I'm very excited about our agri, our agri customer. This one continues to move up the board uh, as far as confidence goes, as far as probability goes. We did meet earlier this week. We had a, a scheduled meeting on Monday. It lasted an hour and a half. It was very, very uh, positive. Uh, the momentum, we're starting to see momentum with this customer. They are, they've seen our budgetary pricing. They did not have a problem with that because it fell right smack in the middle of their, of their funding that they had set aside. They are asking the right questions about schedules, delete times, operating costs, permitting assistance, engineering system, and it's and these are questions that lend themselves to the DB, the DB or the in the design build operate model that we're pursuing. I feel very I feel very comfortable that this one's getting closer and closer, and we could add this one to the the, the contract list maybe in the next forty five days. Um, as far as the consultant, moving on, the consultant in the decentralized water and wastewater world, we are, we've are we added a couple more new consultants just this past week uh, through our education and webinar program. The, 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 the excerpt that you uh, played earlier in the, in the CEO briefing this evening, it's those, it's those presentations that we lead where we open doors and we get to meet with specifying engineers and consulting firms. It's there is where we are really broadening our network and we are connecting with engineers and end users through that, that exercise. So we are adding more and more customers to that on a daily basis. As far as other opportunities, I did mention it a couple, a couple of minutes ago, um, a consultant working in Texas, working for a, an existing wastewater utility. Um, again, one of these very small ones, they are under a regulatory mandate to fix their problem and they want to purchase the consultant after reviewing all of our technologies and comparing them to other technologies is selected and is going to specify and recommend our Everiskid 10,000 gallon per day membrane bioreactor technology. That customer, I think because of the nature of the ownership, I do feel comfortable that there will be a design build operate scenario there and possibly an ownership scenario. It's sized properly and perfectly for what we are doing. Well, good. I mean, obviously, as we move into operate, we're going to, to uh, need to staff up and put in some software and systems. And that's what Tom, of course, is working on to source some of these. There are existing uh, packages from companies that, that will off, offer an, an operation and maintenance um, process. And I think we're going to have to invest in that. But the great part about it is it's, it's continuing revenue, right? You're actively managing a customer and and um, so I believe that the big expense is acquiring a customer in the first place, and it's very wasteful to then go okay goodbye. <laughs> um, you know, if you can somehow hold on to them and and continue to met, to produce um, you know clean water for them and and maintain systems and keep it up to, at par, then it's it's a gift that keeps on giving, and then we can step into the ownership thing 
um, which is definitely for real. Um, I also happened to hear on the progressive water side, a huge project, the one that I won't mention the name, but uh, we know the one we're talking about here uh, from Tom. And um, this is potentially a $5.4 million three project pipeline mm -hmm. uh, that is coming. And, and it's a good thing we have a CFO now <laughs> so that we can manage some of the cash flow on that because it's going to be interesting. But it really means that, that we're finally moving out of that million dollar a quarter you know, bracket sort of purgatory that's been going on. Progressive water is, is breaking out and with this one single project is more than it, it does in an entire year. And then you, you guys just in, in June did roughly, uh, well, did more than you did the entire of last year in, in just two weeks. So I, I, I'm blown away because all this is in addition to all the new stuff that we're developing with the funding and then the even more exotic stuff with the crypto. So I, I thank you guys for the hard work. It is really, really, really appreciated. Glad to be, glad to be a part of the team and um, really pleased with the progress we're making. And again, kudos and, and I'm very appreciative of what Rob does. Also, by the way, Rob's going on a well-deserved vacation. He is, as soon as he signs off from this briefing, he is on vacation for seven or 10 days and I wish him the best. Oh, okay, so this briefing is just gonna keep on going. <laughs> we're just not going to turn it off and you just got to stay we got to let him we got to let him go we're paying him double time he's on he's on vacation <laughs> ouch ouch yeah well I, I, that's dangerous um ron asked a question do we have videos of these systems in action and i do believe we do um are they on the website where are they at uh, we've got a few videos. Um, I'd have to go back and look. Um, I'll work with uh, I'll work with Tom and our and Arcom team to see if we can't find those and, and identify and link you to them. Great. Yeah. Well, we'll um, Ron. We'll we'll point to them next week in the briefing, and of course, they will also show up in the Origin Clear technology section, which we're building out very nicely. So, uh, again, thank you very much, gentlemen. I uh, appreciate it. Rob, where are you going on vacation? Uh, going to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. North Outer Banks, that's a beautiful place. It is. Wow. Well, good for you and get the salt air and the breeze and then get back to work. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, Will thank do. you very much. Um, I'll let you go. And then I'm going to just uh, do a couple of slides to wrap up. It's been a, a good long briefing, but I think very productive. So again, um, thank you and enjoy the weekend and the vacation. Thank you, Riggs. Right. Thank you, Riggs. Bye-bye now. See you. All right, so uh, just a couple more slides here. Um, as I said, Ken is in Puerto Rico, so this is just a quick formality. Uh, we have Series U, which is a very, uh, has this wonderful leverage, but most important is the conversion price is guaranteed to a certain ceiling. That's very, very important. Um, one second, I got a chat from somebody. Somebody is chatting with me. Um, and then the other one, of course, is the one where that's building our funds. and. We believe we're going to start, we know we're going to be getting some inflows into this. And that's going to enable this uh, DBOO, as we call it, design, build, own, and operate to happen. And then everything goes from there. So that's um, quickly about that. And of course, Ken, to schedule with Ken, simply go to oc.gold slash Ken. So um, what I wanted to quickly say is that the, the story with the coin is developing fast, but it is really being done in, inside my office. It's being done as a completely outsourced activity. It's not impacting the team at all in Texas, uh, nor even uh, the corporate team. It's being done as a special project, but I think it will do. I've been very frustrated over the years. Some of you have seen me try to do things, for example, about that water in Compton, and uh, it was it got very political very fast. So um, I'm really looking forward to being able to, um, you know, break that and. Um, so from blank to everyone, a long but nutritious brief. <laughs> well, all right. Well, thank you all. It's been fantastic having you. Uh, a lot of people stuck around for a very detailed briefing. Um, I guarantee you these things, will, you will see a lot of detail. Um, I'm going to give you a lot more data about the, the water coin. Um, JRW says, just saying hello and thanks for all the great work you are doing. Looking forward to being able to invest. Well, I love hearing that because that is a big part of what I do. Um, but there's very, very important stuff happening 
where I, I believe we're going to be able to do to sort of sponsor something that gets people able at the grassroots level able to do stuff about water while we take care of the industrial water treatment things. And um, without that, we're just, you know, um, being a very niche, you know, very um, specialized operation. Steve, Stevan Davis, uh, thanks for the update. See you on the next investor call. Thank you all. I appreciate it. You all have a good night and uh, enjoy your weekend. It's been wonderful. And thank you, Rick Garcia.